Beechworth in northeastern Victoria came into existence as a rip-roaring gold rush town in 1852 with the discovery of one of the richest alluvial gold fields in the world. Walking down the main street of Beechworth is a bit like a time walk. You feel like you've gone back to the old gold rush days. All of these shops and shop fronts don't appear to have changed at all. Of course they've got modern stuff for sale in them. Pioneering miners turned over every nook and cranny seeking Norway's gold. Sub -treasury. It was so plentiful, it was escorted to Melbourne every fortnight with an average load of 14,000 ounces per coach. It's difficult to imagine when you walk alongside this little creek here that this is where an enormous amount of wealth came out of that little creek. Gold, alluvial gold, was found in this creek, huge amounts of it. When the miners came here, they would have been lining the banks all along the side here every day, getting enough out of there to earn a living, and in some cases, a fortune. Quite amazing, really. No gold there now today. Just 10 minutes from the town centre, a short walking trail leads to Woolshed Falls. Here, during a second, much later wave of gold fever, more than 2,000 ounces of alluvial gold were recovered from Spring Creek between 1918 and 1920. It's a popular picnic and swimming spot today, but the colourful history of the abundant gold is not far from the mind. At the other end of town is a very tangible reminder of just how much gold. Built in 1860, this was the powder magazine. It was a stone construction built to withstand a possible blast because inside they had all the gunpowder that was used for blasting in the mines. It's well away from the town centre but it's in a safe place so if it did actually go boom, nobody would get hurt. Fortunately it was never put to the test. On the western edge of town, Pennyweight Winery is one of many in the region popular with visitors. This offers a chance to visit the maturing cellars where a close eye is kept on the progress of the fortified varieties. This is a fully organic product that has built a formidable reputation for quality. This family-owned winery is now in the hands of the third generation of winemakers. For those who prefer a soft drink, Beechworth has its own homegrown product. It's made in an old building, once home to a successful beer brewing business. Inside, a museum details the history of Murray breweries. The pressure of big factory beer production, lower freight costs and the growing support for the temperance movement in the early 1920s put the original brewery under so much stress that it came close to closing down. As one of the biggest employers in the town, the owners wanted to keep their loyal workers, so switched to cordial production. It was a highly successful decision. Visitors can visit the museum, sample some of their merchandise and take a bottle or two home if they want. We timed our visit to Beechworth to catch the annual Celtic Festival. Irish dancers attracted an appreciative crowd in the main street on Saturday morning. Unable to resist a good market, Lorraine and I fronted up to the Anglican church grounds on Saturday morning. The strains of old-time favourites played on a piano accordion by Lazy Harry entertains both the stallholders and their customers. All kinds of artisans displayed their wares beneath their colourful gazebos, offering hand-knitted garments, jewellery, leatherwork and all manner of homemade delights. It's not too much of a stretch of the mind to think that we had stepped back 100 years or more to a time when life's simple pleasures 
involved a day out with a family to stock up. On the Saturday, Queen Victoria Park's a place to come because here you've got hundreds of traders, all storeholders, selling all kinds of things, including food. The stalls offer everything from fairy floss to Celtic fighting swords. We manage to resist both. Thousands of visitors and local residents come out for the day to enjoy the festive atmosphere. The bustling crowd is in great spirits and the entertainment is definitely Celtic. This annual celebration of the contribution the Scottish Highlanders made to the town is embraced by the whole town and the 8,000 or so visitors who come to join in. It's difficult to go home without a bag full of goodies from an event like this. Our time in Beechworth is almost over. Time to say farewell, return to our motorhome and move on in the morning.